Hey, my name is Justin, and today we are going to be taking a look at how to get great tone with computer amplifiers. Now I know what you're thinking. Great tone, computer amplifier, can never be used in the same sentence. Believe me, I was one of you, but after some careful practice and playing around with the software I have, I found that you can actually get some pretty great results. It does require a mindset change. If you go into it thinking, how do I make this laptop sound like my $2,000 boutique amplifier? Sadie. Sadie. I love you. You're gonna be disappointed. But if you look at it as, how do I take this software and make it sound good in the context of the mix, you're gonna start seeing some great results. So today I'm gonna to show you three basic principles I employ when I look at computer-based amplifiers. You can apply it across any platform. I'm gonna be using Native Instruments Guitar Rig 5. So without further ado, here are some samples I use Guitar Rig on in my own productions. All right, here's song number one. It's something of a pop ballad, think Coldplay, U2, anything of that nature. I think you'll get the picture. Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and play it for you. Here it comes. The first sample I gave is a great example of the first principle, which is get the drive sound you're looking for from the amp simulator, not the pedal sims. Now there are some good drive pedal simulators out there. For me, I think once you introduce those to the amp simulators, something in it doesn't seem to to jive well together. Whereas if you get the drive sound out of the amp, that sounds much more realistic to me or much more the character of the amp. So I tend to do it that way. And if you think about it, in an ideal world, we would hop into the studio with about 10,000 guitars and 10,000 amps. And we would find that perfect one guitar and that perfect one amp for that right tone. You know, we would want a really clean, true guitar signal. And the nice thing about these software amps is it allows us to kind of experience that and kind of recreate that in a, in a useful way. So let's look at these sounds. Here's the bottom layer. It's a, it's a clean guitar sound. I'll show you the drive setup. Yeah. So I'm just using the high white, which I think is a high watt. It's definitely some sort of British sounding amp. Use the delay man, which is very clearly a, a memory man. Here's the thing, if you don't know this, you can press that, that arrow down here, and I, I want to set it to sync uh, with the tempo of the session. Let's see, what is it? I have a quarter note, pretty high feedback, low depth on the modulation, and a little bit lower mix. And this ice reverb is really cool. I have no idea what it's doing, but it seems to add this neat pad-like blanket of sound behind anything I put it on. I really like it. It, it, it almost reminds me of the choral reverb a little bit on the big sky. All right, here's what it sounds like. Here's the part. That sounds really good to me. I, I wouldn't question it as, it as being fake or real. Here's the next part. These are high triads. It's labeled. Let's see what we have running here. All right, see a very similar setup, except you'll notice the normal volume and the master are up quite a bit from where it was before. I wanted a little more drive sound and I got it through the amp. I didn't add any drive pedals. I just changed the amp settings. This is what it sounds like. Let's look at part three. Part three is labeled U2 guitar. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be some dotted A thing. All right, here it is. Yep, use the jump off the edge preset and I'm sure I modified it from there. Now this is kind of interesting, the order of things. So we have the delay man hitting the amp and then we're adding the studio reverb post. What I've noticed is if you put effects after the amp, it's similar to as if you put them in the effects loop, or if you were using a send in, in mixing in Logic. If you throw this stuff in front of it, it sounds a little more closely like if you ran your pedal board directly into the input of your amp. 
So in this case, we're using both those things. This is what the part sounds like. So here's the fourth part and the final part for this sample. It is labeled hook. I think you have an idea of what it is. The lead line. Let's pull up guitar rig. Ah, yes, good old clean cave. This is my absolute favorite preset I've found. It's cool because the way they've split it is they have all the wet reverby stuff going to channel B. And then channel A just has a delay and the amplifier and this comp. Actually, that's not channel A, the comp's before the channel split. But the nice thing about here is this bottom thing, the split mix, you can turn it just like you would ascend for how much of that wet signal you want. So if you see here, we're definitely leaning more towards dry. Let's, let's take a listen to what it sounds like. Here's song number two. It's a dark electro alternative vibe. Think M83 meets the 1975 meets Coldplay meets U2 meets Switchfoot, because why not? Here it is. This song is a great example of the second principle, which is, since we aren't using real amps, why are we trying to make our guitar sound real? Now think about it for a second. One of the beautiful things about technology is you can create things that don't exist or we don't know how to make. And I took advantage of that here with this song. You don't need to necessarily recreate what you would with your pedal board. Maybe you want to make a new sound. And I did that just here. I have made something similar to this when I had to play this song live through my pedal board, but what, it wasn't quite the same. Let's pull up what I, what I grabbed here. Yeah, once again, I've used this hit me on the filter bank. It's using an LFO to create this beat syncing thing with the, uh, with the filter. It's really cool. Definitely play around with this a bunch. It sounds great. This is the part. <laughs> So the next part here is a much more standard guitar tone, super verby, washed out. I believe I use Clean Cave again. Yep. This preset never ceases to amaze me. There's something really great about it. I like it because it's really washy and really clear at the same time. And I think it is because of the split channels here. You don't lose the attack of the guitar in the mix, but it still feels really spacious as if you had, you know, your big sky turned all the way up with like a 12 second decay. Here's the part. And here is song number three. It's a little bit of a grungy pop alternative vibe. Think the new Beck stuff, a little bit of MGMT, even a little bit Foster the People. Here it is. <laughs> So for song three, I did some pretty weird stuff on the guitars here, which brings me to principle number three. Don't be afraid to experiment. A lot of times, some of the best musical ideas come out of mistakes or accidental things you stumble upon. I know that's how I write half my songs, and I'm sure you've experienced something similar. So in, in the case of this song, um, I guarantee you for this tone on the main guitar, this was an accident. Let me pull it up. As you can see, I put the tube compressor in between the chain of um, the amp head and the amp cabinet. And I can tell you right now, I did not do that on purpose. I'm sure I just grabbed it out of, you know, the components menu over here. And when I pulled it over, it ended up being there. But, you know, it had kind of a funky sound, so I went ahead and, and kept it. This is what it sounds like. And 
actually in doing that, it kind of darkened the amp quite a bit in a cool, sludgy, distorted, weird way. But that's exactly the sound I was going for. So for the hook of this song, I thought it would be cool to come up with a synthy guitar sound. So I started playing around with different presets and tweaked one I found. Let's pull it up. I named it Hook Verbi because I'm so creative. All right. I used spinning in space and then I messed around with all the sparkle stuff and filter and all that to get it to have this really crazy shimmering reverb. This is what it sounds like. And that's a wrap on laptop amplifiers. I hope from this video you learned a couple new insights on how you can use the software you already have in new ways, more effective ways. If you have any further questions leave them below and if you haven't yet please subscribe to this channel i'd so appreciate it i will love you forever and if you don't i'd still love you but maybe not forever bye